plants fight a daily battle for survival. The water in the soil is not just liquid water, it's liquid water that's pulling away from the plant. So the plant has to exert this huge amount of tension on that water column to drag that water up out of the soil and up to the leaves. And the plant again sort of has to fight against the atmosphere which is, which is dragging water out of the plant. Professor Tim Brodrib has spent much of his career probing those interactions. He studies the vascular system, a series of pipes responsible for distributing water through the plant. This system involves a constant tug of war between the soil which holds water and the plant which tries to pull that water away. But it's a delicate balance. Too much tension to the continuous threads of water inside the pipe and they will snap. In the past decade, Professor Brodrib has worked on visualising those processes of tension and cavitation. His team has developed a way of looking into plants in real time using tiny cameras fitted on their leaves. They were the first scientists in the world to capture the moment a leaf dies, a lightning-like bolt zapping along its veins. They've now installed these cameras, not just here in Tasmania, but also overseas, including on sensitive ferns and redwood trees in California. I have sensors on, the, on trees that I watch with my mobile phone and, and I spend half the day just watching, you know, watching my mobile phone because I'm curious to see what's going on. To be able to communicate with plants in that way is just really pretty thrilling. It's also critical work to better understand how we can make our forests more resilient to climate change. Professor Brodrib says the ability to monitor the impact of worsening heat and drought on different tree species will play a key role in saving them. It would be a bad look if two degrees of climate change equals half of the world's forest suddenly dying from acute evaporative stress. You know, and if we don't have the science to tell us that that's a really, really critical limit that we shouldn't be reaching, then, then we're, just, you know, we're just floating around in the daydream. The, the, the way that we're putting limits on climate extremes at the moment are not based on, on plant behaviour. I mean, they should be uniquely based on plant behaviour because they're the things that sustain everything on Earth. Professor Brodrib has always had a love for plants and studying them delights him to this day. I just have an incredible respect for plants, I think, and, and, and an incredible curiosity that, that in everything we do, it's, it, we, we get this little step and, 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 and an interesting insight into something, but it just opens up a whole lot of new questions, just really basic questions that we don't understand and questions that we, we really must understand. His work shedding light on some of those fundamental questions has now seen him elected a fellow of the Australian Academy of Science. I sort of feel the classic imposter syndrome perhaps, but I'm really excited to join the Academy and to be a part of this amazing community of people and, and many members that, who I know and, and have you know, huge respect for.